Do you ever feel like you're your own worst critic? Like you're so self-doubtful that it cripples you? I'm Jean Churchill and I help midlife women regain their confidence from the inside out and the outside in using mindset, makeup and skincare so they look and feel amazing and can live their best life. Just like you, I'm a busy woman navigating modern day life. I'm a corporate worker, a devoted wife and dog mom, a side hustler, and I volunteer for two amazing organisations. So I know firsthand how difficult it can be to wear multiple hats. In the middle of all of that, I also get how hard it is to take time out for yourself and the guilt that goes with it when you try. So I've come to recognise that mindset and self-care go hand in hand. And that's okay, because I've learned to prioritise, to make time for the things that are important to me, to say no to the things that aren't important to me, and having a good mindset is really essential part of that. I release a new mindset video every week, so if you don't want to miss them, there is a subscribe button underneath this video. Just click that and you'll never miss one again. So self-doubt can be completely crippling in its own right. The confidence that little girls and little boys have seems to get stripped away as they hit teenage years. When you ask little boys and little girls what they want to be when they grow up, their imagination is the only limit, right? But as grown women, those ambitions seem to have just been filed under impossible. Worse still, we might have forgotten they ever even existed. And just when we internalise that self-doubt and it becomes the norm for us, something else happens. Up pops the next problem, which is that little nagging voice in the back of your head. Now, confidence isn't something that we're born with. It's really easy to look at successful, confident people and imagine that they've always been like that, that they were born that way. But that isn't true. We have to learn the habits that make us become more confident. Getting confident is an inside job. And if you don't know where to start, there's a free PDF underneath this video, which is called Eight Life Hacks to Boost Your Self-Confidence. Might get you started. So that little voice in your head, that little nag, nag, nag. Some people call them mind monkeys. It will quite often start a conversation with what if. What if it all goes wrong? What if they say no? What if you don't get the job? What if you fall on your face? What if you forget your lines? Is that the voice of reason? No, it's absolutely not the voice of reason. It's the voice of worst case scenario possible ever. The voice of total negativity. The voice telling you not to get out there outside of your comfort zone. The voice telling you not to take risks. The voice telling you to play it safe. Stay small. Don't rock the boat. We might sink. And sometimes when we're a little bit more self-aware, we hear the voice, we hear what's going on, and that's good. It's good because you can have a chance of answering it back, give it as equal positive airtime as that's trying to give negative airtime. So imagine this scenario, you're going for an interview. Well, that'll all go wrong. If you hear that and catch it, you might say, what's the worst thing that can happen? What if your boss finds out? What if it all goes wrong? What's going to happen to us when we don't get the job and your boss has found out? If you can hear that voice going on in your head, it's easier to shut it up. It's easier to come back with some positivity, to tell it to go away. A good mantra to have up your sleeve is, what's the worst thing that can happen? If you keep saying that over and over again, it's probably not a life or death situation that you're facing, right? 99 times out of 100, I reckon your conscious mind could argue that the risk is worth taking. Other times though, when you can't hear that voice, it just gets away with rambling on inside your head without you even being aware of it. So without being conscious of that little voice, that is when you're in danger zone. Let me explain why, and this is a little bit technical, but your subconscious mind has no filter. It has no strategy for counterbalancing or counterarguing anything that it hears. It doesn't question anything that it's given. It doesn't judge. It doesn't receive a piece of information and go, oh, that's right, that's wrong, that's illegal, that's immoral, that's highly unlikely. It doesn't judge any of those things. So your subconscious mind is in fact just like one big hard drive that accepts anything that's sent to it and stores it forever. Every message received, believed, stored. 
and all of those messages can come back at any given time and that's dangerous. And this hard drive of information opens for business before you're even born. As soon as you are capable of receiving messages, in they go. It stores messages right from the get go, how you've been brought up, the values that you're brought up with within a family, the culture that you're in, the community, the religion, all of those messages actually come for you to create your own value system of what you believe to be right or wrong. But actually, it's all fed to you right from when you're very little. And all of those communications come down to what you think of other people and what you think of yourself. It's especially important what you think of yourself. It's the expectations that you put on yourself, the capabilities you think you have, the limitations you believe you have, and ultimately how far you believe you should push yourself. In short, all of those things define your self limitations, what you believe you are capable of or not. So here's the message. You create your own limits. You're putting your own glass ceiling on when nobody else is actually putting it there for you. So what if you could just take them away as easily as you'd put them up? Here are four quick ways to counteract that little voice in your head. Number one, practice mindfulness and self-awareness. Start paying attention to your thoughts. Notice when that negativity comes in and start to counterbalance it with some positivity. By being aware of negative thoughts and that little voice, you can start to put challenges up against it. You can remind yourself that negative thoughts are not factual and you can reframe them. Number two, surround yourself with positivity. Our surroundings and people around us can greatly influence how we feel about ourselves. Look for the positive influences in your life, like the good friends, mentors and colleagues. Find activities that uplift your mood, like a good walk or running or crosswords, whatever it is for you. Find that thing and practice it, i.e. do it. You can also counteract negative self-talk by finding some gratitude. So perhaps write a gratitude journal every morning or every evening. Find the things that you are grateful for that you have in your life already. Number three, create a growth mindset. What do I mean by that? Embrace that challenges and failures are opportunities for learning. Instead of not doing a thing because your little voice tells you it might go wrong, embrace the fact that you're going to do it. And you know what? It probably will go wrong the first time you do it, but you're going to learn from that. And the next time you do it, you'll get a bit better. And the next time you'll get a bit better again. We're all on that journey. Embrace it. Adopting a growth mindset also means you'll find resilience. And that resilience will help you silence that little voice. And number four, remember that confidence isn't something that we're born with. We have to learn the habits. And they do say that habits take 9.42 weeks to cement in. So it's not an overnight job. But if you don't know where to start, like I said, underneath this video, there is eight life hacks to boost your self-confidence. Some will be in the moment, some will take a week or so, and some are longer term strategies, but they will give you an idea to start. So download that and get cracking. I love to hear all of your feedback. And of course, if you've got any questions, please let me know. I answer them all personally, so far away. And in the meantime, I'm wishing you a fantastic week.